This is part 10 titled Children and Joint Heirs in this sermon series on our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. Be enriched as you listen. All right, I just want to read uh, two testimonies. Um, uh, this was uh, a testimony, this is a short, short testimony that came in on the 19th of September. Uh, this, this person had a problem, a, back, a pulled back muscle pain for about a month, and they're watching the service online. This happened on 19th, so it's about two Sundays ago. Uh, or rather, the email came on the 19th, so this was the Sunday prior, I think, um, and said, uh, uh, during the prayer, uh, I, pray, I prayed declaring that my body is redeemed and sickness has to leave. So that message that Sunday was redeemed in Christ. And he writes, he says, God healed me completely in an instant. So pain that was there for a month just disappeared. I praise God for his finished work on the cross and healing touch. Amen. This was, again, a very interesting testimony. Last Sunday, we had our first in-person service. Uh, so this person came into the service and she wrote this. Um, uh, she writes, after a long time, I was able to attend our in-person church service. Recently, I was asking God to speak to me, to encourage, strengthen me, to build my faith. And I was asking God in prayer that I want to feel his presence and want to know that God is with me. Even at the end of the service, uh, you know, so we told people to expect you know, that God would speak to them. Uh, so one of our pastors, I think Pastor Nancy, ministered to our congregation. She spoke uh, and she said uh, that God says that as he said to Hagar, I am the God who sees and he sees everything. And he's concerned about even the smallest things in our life. And he loves us so deeply and cares so deeply in each, uh, in each and every one of us. Then this person says, I knew that message is for me by the hint she gave, like there was a minor kitchen accident that happened. And I was upset with that. That happened exactly a couple of days before Sunday. So I felt so happy that God heard my prayer and spoke to me. I'm sure I was able to feel his presence the rest of the day. Amen? So you can clap, be excited. <laughs> so, you know, just that little thing, you know, how God spoke to this person here about that kitchen accident. It ha I'm not saying it's a nice thing that happened, but it happened in her life. And it, it's, it's a way for God to say, look, I know you are here and uh, I see you. So that's just very, very encouraging uh, to hear that. Okay, so are you ready to hear the Word of God? Amen? Uh, do you love God's Word? So hold your Bible if you brought it with you. and Just say, I love God's Word. I love my Bible. Amen? So we have to treasure God's Word. We have to love the Word of God. And um, God works in our lives by His Word. And uh, we have to be established in the Word of God. Now, we've been doing this series on our identity in Christ. I know it's, uh, it's a long uh, series, meaning we've been taking a lot of time uh, uh, just talking about this, but uh, it's a very important revelation in the Scriptures, in the New Testament. The, apostle, uh, the Lord Jesus told us that a time will come when we will know that we are in Him and He is in us. So He said, you're going to get this revelation. And sure enough, through the Apostle Paul, the Lord uh, God revealed, and to the apostles, other apostles revealed this revelation. It's recorded for us uh, in the epistles, and we're just uncovering, getting to understand what this revelation is. And this is so important because it can really transform our lives when we receive this truth of our identity in Christ and of our inheritance in Christ and learn how to live out of that. It can totally transform our lives. And uh, we can live in a constant life of victory. That doesn't mean you won't have any battles. That doesn't mean there won't be any challenges. But in spite of the battles, in spite of the challenges, you and I can learn how to walk in victory when we learn to live out of our identity and our inheritance in Christ. And so we've been taking our time in this series. Uh, I assure you we will finish it. Uh, but uh, I really want this truth to sink into your heart. Uh, just to quickly review, we talked about the, uh, uh, about the fact that we are new creation in Christ, that we are justified in Christ, 
We are sanctified. We are identified with Christ. We also talked about the spirit of life in Christ. We talked about being redeemed in Christ. And two Sundays ago, we talked about being free in Christ. Today, we're going to take this forward and talk about this truth that we are sons and daughters of God. Now, when we talk about being children of God, many of us say, well, yeah, yeah, I know that. You know, I received Christ. I became a child of God. I was born again. I became a child of God. That's true. But what does it mean? And how do you live out of that in everyday life? How do you face life as a son, as a daughter of God? And uh, how do we make that truth something that's uh, uh, you know, practical in everyday life? So I want to touch on that and uh, try to condense this, of course, in uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a message uh, this morning. But let's read some scriptures first. I want us all to read these verses. They'll come up on the screen. So let's just read, uh, read them out loud together. So first, let's read Galatians 3 and verse 26. Let's all read them out together, please. Let's go. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That means you're all Sons and daughters, children of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. The next scripture is John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Again, a very familiar verse. Let's read it out loud together, please. Let's go. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. So all who received him, he's given them the right to become children of God. So you, as a person who has received Jesus into your life, you are a child of God. And you've been born of God. It's like God fathered you. God gave birth to you. You are born of God. I want to read a few more passages and then just bring out certain truths here for us this morning. The next passage we're going to read is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Again, let's read out together. Let's go. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. This, these words are so amazing. He's saying God chose us even before the foundation of the world. It's amazing. Here we are, you know, uh, about 6,000 plus years, and it says God chose you. No, you knew each one of us by name before the foundation of the world. And he predestined us to be adopted into his family. That means even before things started, he said, I got a plan. I want people, I want these people to be part of my family. Predestined us as a, uh, for the adoption as sons. We're going to talk about that. So that's amazing. Another scripture here, Romans chapter 8. Just a few more passages, all right, and then we will... Uh, uh, bring out truths from these passages. I just want to read them all first. Romans 8, verses 14 through 17. Let's read them out together, please. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So the Apostle Paul is bringing out a lot of truth. He says, look, God has brought us into his family, and we can call God Abba, Father. And call God Father. And then, as children, we are led by the Holy Spirit. As children, he says, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, that's not a small thing. That's not a small thing. We are heirs and joint heirs. 
And so he says, you know, it's okay if you suffer a little bit. We're heirs. We're joint heirs. It's okay if you suffer. So that we can be glorified together. So what a privilege right now. We are heirs and joint heirs. We want to talk about that. Another parallel passage to this is Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Let's read it out together, please. Let's go. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Same thing, same parallel passage. It says, God, he didn't want us to be under the law. He redeemed us from the law. He sent his Holy Spirit into our hearts. And we cry, Abba, Father. And he says, because you're a son, you're, not, you're, not just, you're no longer a slave. I mean, don't behave like a servant. I mean, yes, we serve the Lord. But he doesn't want us to behave like a slave. You're a son. You have to call God Abba, Father. And then he says, you are an heir of God through Christ. One last passage, Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30, and then we will talk about these things. Romans 8, 28 to 30. Let's go. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Let's read them out loud. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Again, Paul is telling us all that God has done for us as his children. So, based on all of these scriptures and probably many others, I want to just condense what it means to be a son and a daughter of God. And what, what, how, how this truth should grip our hearts and how we live out of this in everyday life. So, first thing that we see, and I'm just you know, picking up insights from all of these passages, may not be necessarily uh, referencing them while I'm just summarizing it. The first thing is this. We understand that we are adopted as sons and daughters. This gives us a sense of belonging. God has adopted you. We didn't deserve this. But he said, I'm bringing you into my family. And right at the very beginning of this series on studying who we are in Christ, we said, you know, think about um, uh, a street kid or a, a, a kid that you know, uh, is an orphan kid in the slums. And if a man takes that child and brings, it in, brings that boy uh, into his family and adopts it, his whole world changes. And that's what God has done. But in a much grander scale, he has adopted us into his family. And you have been adopted into the family of God. You belong to his family. So you are not a prodigal. You're not a slave. You're not an orphan. Don't behave like one. Amen? Don't ever say, Oh God, I have nobody in this world. So God, what did, what did I do for you? I adopted you. You belong to God. You are not an orphan in this world. You are not a slave. You are a son and a daughter of God. God didn't say, come, be a now, now, I'll give you now clean my house. <laughs> he, he didn't say, come and just do some work for me. He said, come be my son. Come be my daughter in the house. You have been adopted as a son, as a daughter of God into the very family of God. That's who you are. And you have a sense of belonging because of that. Amen? See, many times we, we, we have this sense, we have this need to belong. 
And sometimes, you know, uh, especially growing up as, as young people, you know, you feel like, man, nobody really, you know, nobody's embracing me as part of their clique or part of their group or I don't belong. I want you to know there's a belonging that you have that is greater than belonging to some group or some, you know, whether it's your group on your campus or whether it's a group in your workplace, your belonging, you have the highest and the greatest belonging, which is in the very family of God. Amen? So your, the need to belong has been met when God adopted you as his son and his daughter. The second thing we see here in these verses is that he has chosen us. You're chosen to be loved. And uh, we read that God chose us even before the foundation of the world. To choose means he literally picked you. Literally. He chose you. He said, you're going to be mine. And he says he chose us so that we would be holy and without blame covered by his love. So can you imagine God said, I'm choosing you. And I want you to be covered by my love. So you've been chosen to be loved by God. Let's say this together. I've been chosen. Put your right hand up. I've been chosen to be loved by God. God chose me. He handpicked me to love me. That's truth. You've been chosen to be loved by God. He chose you. Before the foundation of the world, that you should be holy and without blame before Him in love or covered by His love. He chose you, handpicked you to be an object of His love. And if you are an object of His love, then you are an object of everything else that comes from Him His blessing, His grace, His mercy, His provision. He chose you, He handpicked you. So you are chosen. To be loved as a son, as a daughter of God. Now, this doesn't mean that you know God uh, decided this for you. No, the Bible is very clear. We are, you know, we are free moral beings, so we all have a choice in this. So that's why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. The people who say yes to the call, they become the chosen ones. So the invitation is for everybody. The whole world is. God says, come on, everyone, you can be my sons and daughters. So the invitation goes to everyone. But when you say yes to it, then you become one of his chosen ones. And he says, that's for you. You're an object of my love. So you've been chosen to be loved by God. We also see here, so this, this gives you and me a sense of blessedness, a sense of blessing. God loves me. His favor is on my life. So as a son and a daughter of God, no matter what you face, your attitude must be, I'm blessed by God. Situations change, but God's mind about you has not changed. You're still His chosen. Amen? So when you wake up in the morning, doesn't matter which side of the bed you roll out of your bed from, (laughs) You're still blessed. You're still loved loved by God. Doesn't matter what you face. You're still God's son and daughter. And you have this attitude, I am blessed today. Because I've been chosen to be loved by God. The third thing we see here is this. You and I are predestined to be like Jesus. So predestined means that God planned ahead of time. He said, those whom he foreknew, that means he knew ahead of time, Romans 8 says, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Predest means he said, okay, here's a plan. That all my sons and daughters, I'm going to make them like Jesus. So put your right hand up and say this with me. I'm predestined to be like Jesus. Let's say it again. I'm predestined to be like Jesus. See, what is God doing in you? He's making you like Jesus. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus. So this brings a sense of eternal destiny. So being um, adopted gives us a sense of belonging. Being chosen gives us a sense of being loved. Being predestined gives us a sense of eternal 
destiny. That means God is working something in my life. Whatever is happening in my life, it's only working for my good. It's only working to make me more like Jesus. See, whatever the devil throws at you, hey, it's only going to make me more like Jesus. That's the Father's plan. He predestined that each one of us be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus. What is God working in you? He's working in you to conform you and me to the image of His Son. He said, I want you to be like Jesus. And He's working that out in our lives. That's why Paul can say, all things are working together for good to those who are called according to His purpose. And what's His purpose? To be conformed to the image of His Son. So, we are predestined for this purpose, to be like Jesus. And uh, God is working this out for us. The fourth thing we see in all of these verses is, as a son and a daughter, you're called to his purpose. It says, God is working all things together for our good, for those who, who, are, who love him and were called to his purpose. So you and I are called to the purposes of God. That means, God has, th that word called simply means to be invited and appointed. Let's say this together. Called means... To be invited and appointed. So you are called. What does that mean? He invited you and then he appointed you. He invited you into his plan and he appointed you for his purpose. So you are called. Say, I'm called for his purpose. God invited you into his plan and then he appointed you for his purpose. So as a son and a daughter of God, you're a person who is called what does it mean? You've been invited into his plan and appointed for his purpose. So on this earth, you're a called person. You're not wandering aimlessly. You're called. You're on a mission because he has appointed you for his purpose. So there's an eternal purpose, which is to be like Jesus. But on this earth, you also have a purpose for your life. As a son and a daughter of God, he has a purpose for you. Amen? So you need to remind yourself, I'm called. I'm called for the purpose of God. I'm not here wandering aimlessly. You know, I'm going through college. What happens to college? Well, I'll stumble into a job. What happens after a job? I'll stumble into a marriage. What happens there? I'll stumble into fatherhood. What happens there? I'll stumble into old age. No. Life is not about stumbling from one thing to the other. Hey, you're on a mission. You are a called person. As a son and a daughter of God, you're appointed for God's purposes here on earth. Amen? That's who you are as a son, as a daughter of God, as a child of God. And then, as a son and daughter of God, the Bible here, the scriptures also tell us that we've been justified in His sight. And we saw this earlier. To be justified in His sight means you're completely free in His sight. So those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And them he also, uh, those whom he called, he also justified. He also justified. That means, he says, I want you to be free, completely free in my sight. So as a son and a daughter of God, you must know that you are justified in God's eyes. There's nobody who can condemn you or accuse you in the Father's eyes. Because you have been justified through Christ. And you stand before the Father completely free. Are you with me? So as a son and a daughter of God, you are justified. That means there is no condemnation, no accusation against you in the Father's eyes. You go before Him freely. You worship Him. You love Him. You talk to Him. You pour out your heart before Him. And so you don't behave like a slave, like a fearful slave in God's eyes. Because you're his son, you're his daughter, and you're justified in his sight. And the Bible tells us here that those whom he justified, he also glorified. That means you and I, as sons and daughters, we are glorified together with Jesus. That means he's brought us into a place a glorified place. And we'll talk about that. What does it mean to be glorified? As a son and a daughter, he's put you in a place, an, an exalted place, so to speak. A place of glory, a place of 
honor together with Christ. So let me repeat these things here. As children of God, we are adopted, we are chosen, we are predestined, we are called, we are justified, we are glorified. Let's say this together. As, as a child of God, I'm, a, I'm adopted, I'm chosen, I'm predestined, I'm called, I'm justified, I'm glorified. So that gives you a sense of worth. You're glorified with Jesus. You're worth tremendous in the sight of God. And so how do we live as sons and daughters? Firstly, we must understand we are beloved of the Father. We are deeply loved by the Father. As a son, as a son and a daughter, understand you are beloved of the Father. You're deeply loved by God. There's never a moment that God doesn't love you. The Apostle Paul wrote this. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? What can separate us from the love of Christ? The love that God has for us in Christ. And he mentions all things, you know, whether they're earthly calamities or persecutions or angelic opposition, whatever it might be, nothing can separate us from the love that God has for, Christ, has for me in Christ. You are a beloved of the Father. You're loved by God. So, how do you live as a child of God? Learn to receive His love and rest in His love. So many people wonder, you probably are sitting here today, am I loved by God? Does God really love me? I want you to know that because you are a son, you're a daughter of God, you're a beloved of the Father. He loves you. And you don't have to question the Father's love for you. Will God ever stop loving you? No. The Apostle Paul said, nothing can separate me from the love that God has for us in Christ. Nothing will. So don't let the devil ever tell you any moment, you know, God doesn't love you. No, he loves you. You're a beloved of the Father. And because God so loves you, the Apostle Paul says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You have an attitude because you're loved by God. And he says, in all these things, everything I face, I'm more than a conqueror. Why? Because I'm so loved by God. Amen? So what are you facing today? What is your challenge? What is your opposition? Everything is going well in my life. Thank God for it. But maybe there are some people. You're facing challenges today. I want you to know, because you are a son and a daughter of God, you are so loved by God, that in the middle of the challenge, you can say, I am more than a conqueror. Let's say it together. I am more than a conqueror. Let's say it like that. Say it like you really are a conqueror, right? <laughs> I'm more than a conqueror to Christ who loves me. Let's say it again. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. One more time. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Yeah, because I'm loved by God. No matter what I face, I am more than a conqueror. Because nothing can separate me from that love. God's not going to give up on me. He's not going to stop loving me. And that's why he says, what can separate us from the love of God in Christ? Whatever it is, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. You are a son of God. You're a daughter of God. Your heavenly father is so committed to loving you, he'll put you over. He'll get you through. So nothing can separate you from that love. That the Father has for you. I want you to know something. This might sound simplistic, but it's so true. God is too good to do you wrong. God is too wise to make a mistake. And God is too strong to let you down. Let's say it again. God is too good to do me wrong. He's too wise to make a mistake. And he's too strong to let me down. That's your God. And you are a son or a daughter of such a God. And that's how much he loves you so much. You need to be rest, just rest in this. You know, things may not be going so well around you. 
oh, but just rest in this. My God is too good to do me wrong. My God is too wise to make a mistake. And my God is too strong to let me down. He can never do that. So I'm going to rest in his love for me. I am his son. I am his daughter. Amen. You have a father in heaven who is unchanging. He's unfailing, he's bountiful, he's generous, he's merciful, he's redeeming, he's accepting, he's father of abundant grace, he's an empowering father, and he's an infinite father. And you are a son and a daughter of such a heavenly father. Amen? So, rest in his love. Secondly, how do we live as sons and daughters of God? We are brethren. It means we are family. And uh, the scriptures teach us and then especially in Hebrews chapter 2, and I've not read that scripture, but the uh, scripture teaches us that, you know, we are brethren. We are part of the family of God. And as brethren, we live as family. It means your battles are my battles. It means if you're fighting, I'll fight with you. Not against you, with you. Amen? And not only that, Jesus considers you as his brethren. And Hebrews 2 says, He comes to your aid. Amen? Now think about earthly family. Suppose you had an earthly family. And if you know, one brother was going through a hard time, it's very likely the other brother will come along and say, Help. Now that's how it is in the family of God. And Hebrews chapter 2 says that Jesus became like His own brethren. That means He became like you and me. So that, as a great and merciful high priest, he will aid those who are being tempted or who are going through tests. So your elder brother is coming by your side to help you in your struggles. This is Hebrews chapter 2. We don't have time to read it, but just read it. So as part of the family of God, that Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. You become a son and a daughter of God. You're part of the family. And if something troubles you, your elder brother is jumping on the case with you. Amen? You're part of the family. So we're together in this. Now, of course, on, the, uh, on, a, on a natural level, you and I help each other to the extent we can. But I want to assure you, Hebrews 2 says... That your high priest, your elder brother, he aids those who are being tempted. He aids those who are of the seed of Abraham. You are a descendant of Abraham. And he comes to your help. He comes to stand with you. So you're part of the family. We are brethren. And your elder brother, Jesus Christ, is with you in your struggles. Amen. What a privilege. To have him come alongside us. And you need to be confident. Say, Jesus, I thank you, you're with me. Nobody has yet conquered him or overcome him. When he's on your side, you're going to come out, winner. As sons and daughters, just a few more points here. We are heirs, we have an inheritance. The Bible says, and if we are children, and we read this in many places, if we are children, then we are heirs of God. So say this with me, I'm an heir of God. Say it like you believe it, I'm an heir of God. What does it mean to be an heir of God? It means God has given you an inheritance. See, we understand this in earthly terms. In earthly terms, if you belong to a family, then that family will, live, will leave you, if you're a son or daughter in that family, they will leave you an inheritance. In earthly terms. And the Bible is saying, because we are children of God, we are heirs of God. We have an inheritance that has been given to us by a heavenly father. So spiritually, as a son and a daughter of God, you have an inheritance that has been given to you by your heavenly father. But you know, an inheritance is of no use, is of no value, first of all, if you don't know about it. And second, an inheritance is of no value if you don't Take it. The same is true in the spiritual realm. As a son and daughter of God, God has an inheritance for you. It's a spiritual inheritance. 
It's all the spiritual blessings that have been mentioned for us in the scriptures. They are your inheritance. It's for every son and every daughter of God. God is not partial. But now you've got to know about it. You've got to know what is yours. And you've got to take it. You've got to walk in your inheritance. Say it's mine. If you don't walk in your inheritance, there's the devil who is more than happy to keep it away from us. But you are an heir of God. Say this with me. I'm an heir of God. I have a spiritual inheritance given to me by my heavenly father. I will walk in it. Amen. It's every spiritual blessing that God has for you. He made you an heir for that reason. Because he wants you to walk in your spiritual inheritance. And you can make that bear upon your everyday life. It is your inheritance to have a blessed home. God said, my people will live in a peaceful home. In a sure dwelling. In a quiet resting place. It's in the Bible. It's got your name on it. He said, is it there? Yeah. So that's part of your inheritance. And you can have it or you can forfeit it. It's your inheritance for you to be like a tree planted by rivers of water. To bring forth your fruit in its season. Your leaf will not wither and whatever you do will prosper. That's your inheritance because it's in the Bible. Now you can take it, or you can let it go. You can say, no, that's in the Bible. My Heavenly Father wants me to be like the tree. He wants me to prosper and thrive like the tree, so that whatever I put my hands to will prosper. That's my inheritance. My God has given it to me. I'm going to walk in it. You are an heir of God. Amen? And there is so much more. We just mentioned two. As part of your inheritance, God said, you will always win. Now he said, God always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always causes us. That's your attitude. Every situation, I'm coming out the winner. Because God always causes me to triumph. That's my inheritance. He wrote it down for me. Amen? Now you can take it. Or you can leave it. But he said, I made you a son and a daughter because I want you to be my heir. It means I want you to walk in the inheritance I have for you. So tell your neighbor, don't sleep on your inheritance. <laughs> don't sleep on your inheritance. Don't let it go. Make use of it. Amen? You're an heir of God. It means you have an inheritance. Then the Bible also says, if we are children, then we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Christ. What does it mean to be a joint heir? It means what he's got, you got. That's what it means to be a joint heir. You're sharing the inheritance. Whatever is his, is yours. Joint heir. Co-heir. You share in the same thing. Everything the Father gave the Son, as Jesus walked on the earth as a Son of God, everything the Father gave the Son is for you and me today. We can walk as Christ walked on the earth. Christ walked in victory over sin. He walked in victory over circumstance and situations. He walked in victory over demons and disease and death. And he says, you are a co-heir. You walk as Christ walked. You walk in the same things that Christ walked in. I've made you a joint heir with Christ. Do you believe it? It's chapter and verse. It's in the Bible. You are a son and a daughter of God. Means you're an heir of God and you're a joint heir with Jesus. God's made it for you. So you choose to walk in it. The last thing we see here. I close here, close with this, is we are ambassadors for Christ. As children of God, we are ambassadors. We represent the kingdom. Wherever you go, God says, represent me. 
The reason you're a son and a daughter of God is to be an ambassador for the kingdom. God wants to reveal himself through you and me as, as his children. Amen? So today, today is Supernatural Sunday. We're going to pray together. But I want you to pray this morning as a child of God. Not as a slave. Not as an outcast. Not as somebody who is unwelcomed in the presence of God. Worship team, please come. But I want you to pray as a son, as a daughter of God. I want to quickly review what we said. As a child of God, you are an adopted son and daughter. You, you have a sense of belonging. You are chosen to be loved by Him. You have a sense of blessing. You're predestined to be like Jesus. You have a sense of eternal destiny. You're called to his purpose. So there's a sense of purpose here on earth. You are justified in his sight. So there's a sense of freedom in the presence of God. You're glorified with Jesus. There's a sense of worth that you have as a son and a daughter of God. And as a son and daughter of God, you're beloved of the Father. You're deeply loved. You're more than a conqueror in every situation. You are a part of, the, part of the family. Jesus is your elder brother. He's by your side. He's going to aid you in every fight. You're an heir of God, which means you have an inheritance that God has for you. You're a joint heir with Jesus. It means you share in everything God has given to the Son when he, as he walked on the earth. You're an ambassador. You represent the kingdom. This is what it means to be a son and daughter of God. Amen? Are you proud? To be a son and a daughter of God. Yes or no? Put your hand up and say, I'm proud. To be a son. Or a daughter of God. Amen? It's such an honor. That we, who are once sinners, have been adopted into the family of God. And given this glorious standing before the king of this universe, the God of this universe. It's a glorious thing. Today, uh, we're going to pray. And as we pray, I want you to ask as a son, as a daughter of God. But first, before we get into this time of prayer, I want to just give an invitation. Maybe there may, might be any, a person here, one or more. You never received Jesus into your life. One of the very first scriptures we read in the beginning. It says, as many as who received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. So that's the first thing you and I need to do. Receive him to be a son, a daughter of God. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never received Jesus into your life. Saying, Jesus, come. Be the Lord of my life. Or maybe you're watching online and you've never received Jesus into your life. He's the one who died for our sins. He was buried. He rose up again. He's alive today. He's the God who created all things. And he says, I want to come and live inside you. And when you and I receive him, he gives us the power to become the son, sons and daughters of God. So I'm going to do that first. We're going to pray. Then the worship team will lead us. And after that, we're going to go into this time of prayer. And we're going to ask our Heavenly Father to meet our needs, to minister to us. And our pastoral team will be here and we will minister together. So if there's anyone here this morning, you've never received Jesus into your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer so that you can do that today. If you're not sure that you are a son and a daughter of God, but you want to do that this morning, I want to invite you to just pray with me. Let's pray. This is a prayer to help you receive Christ into your life so that you can become a son and a daughter of God. If you've never done this before and you want to do it this morning, just say this with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God and help me follow you and you alone the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, this is a time for great celebration. Is anyone who prayed this prayer with me for the first time today in this auditorium? Just raise your hand. Anybody? He prayed this prayer with me. Very first time. Anybody in this auditorium? I see one hand way at the back. God bless you. Anybody else? He prayed this prayer with me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Okay, at least one hand went up. We don't know if the others are watching online. If you pray that prayer, God bless you. Now you need to grow and live as a son and a daughter of God. Read your Bible. Be part of a good church. Grow strong in your faith and learn how to live as sons and daughters of God. Let's rise to our feet, please. Our worship team will lead us. I want to just worship Jesus. Then we're going to pray and ask our Heavenly Father. Ask our Heavenly Father to meet our needs. Today is Supernatural Sunday. We're going to press into that. Nancy, uh, Jane, please come and take the mics. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved. More than I could imagine. And that is enough. That is enough. I'm already loved, I'm already chosen, I know who I am, I know what you've spoken, I'm already loved, more than I could imagine, that is enough, that is enough. my finger you put the robe upon my back you throw your arms around me and say you are my son my daughter don't forget oh you put the ring upon my finger you put that robe upon my back you throw your arms around me and say come on let's sing it my daughter don't forget oh you put the ring upon my finger you put the robe upon my back You throw your arms around me and say You are my son With my a mighty hand And an outstretched arm You are the God who saves Deliver your name With a mighty hand And an outstretched arm You are the God who condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus where are your accusers now 
Where are your accusers now? There is therefore now no condemnation For those who are in Christ Jesus Where are your accusers now? Where? With the mighty hand And an outstretched arm You are the God who saves Deliverer your name With the mighty hand And an outstretched arm You are the God who saves Deliverer One last time, you put the ringer you put that ring upon my finger You put a robe upon my back You throw your arms around me and say You are my son, my daughter, don't forget oh. You put that ring upon my finger You put that robe upon my back You throw your arms around me and say You are my son, my daughter. Singing Jaira You are enough Oh, Jaira, you are enough. Amen. 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 Now, the Lord Jesus, one day, as he was speaking with his disciples, he said, If any of you have a son, and he comes to you and asks you for a bread, would you give him a stone? If he asks you for a fish, would you give him a snake? If he asks you for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? Jesus said, If you being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more Will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? How much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? What do you think about your heavenly Father? Do you think if you would ask him for a bread, piece of, for a loaf of bread, he'll give you a stone? But sad to say, some of us think like that. Today we're going to change it. I want you to think as a son and a daughter of God. My Heavenly Father, He's too good to do me wrong. He's too wise to make a mistake. He's too strong to let me down. Amen. My Heavenly Father is a good Father. If I ask Him for a bread, He's not going to give me a stone. If I ask Him for a fish, He's not going to give me a snake. If I ask Him for an egg, He's not going to give me a scorpion. That's not the Father of the Bible. My Heavenly Father is a good Father. Amen? Amen. And so with that understanding, with that confidence, I want you, we are going to pray. What is your need? They go to the Father. Say, Father, Jesus put it like this, give us this day our daily bread. It means, this is my need. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to meet my need. That's it. But I want you to keep this thought in mind. You are a joint heir with Jesus. It means you're equally blessed. Let me ask you a question. Was there a prayer that Jesus ever prayed which the Father didn't answer? Was there a prayer that Jesus prayed? The Father didn't answer. No. You are a joint heir with Jesus. 
you have a right to have every prayer answered. You're a co-heir. Amen? Amen? So you have to pray with that kind of confidence. You're a co-heir with Jesus. That's why Jesus said, pray in my name. That means your prayer has equal standing before the throne as Jesus' prayer. It's not of any lesser value or any lesser importance. You are a joint heir with Jesus. So today, pray with that kind of confidence. My father, I'm your son. I'm your daughter. This is my need. This is whatever your need is. Each one of us have different needs at this point in time. It's okay. Go boldly to your heavenly father and pray. And he will be good to you. Shall you all do that? Okay? Take time to pray. And then we will just minister as the Spirit leads. Just everybody, bring your needs before the Father. Father, we come to you boldly, God. You've made us your sons and daughters. You predestined this whole thing. You pre-planned it. And you made us sons and daughters. We stand here as sons and daughters. We stand here as heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Father, every prayer that's being prayed is coming from one of your sons. It's coming from one of your daughters. Every prayer that's being prayed, even those online, wherever they may be, God, it's coming from one of your sons, from one of your daughters. It's coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we come with this confidence that you will meet every need. That you will meet every need, Father. Every prayer that's being prayed. It's from one of your sons. It's from one of your daughters. It's coming with people who are heirs together with Jesus and in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Father, that you will meet that need. And you will intervene in life situations. You will meet that need. We thank you, O God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you that you meet that need. You move in that circumstance, that situation. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you. That every need is being met. I just want to pray for a few things, and then I will, you know, our pastor team will be here as here. They will also pray, minister. I want to pray first of all for, you know, I think it's, it's probably a college student or somebody. You've got a situation in your hostel. Um, things are not going well uh, right there in your room, in your room with your roommate, things are not going well there's, there's a hostile situation and one of you has to leave and you're trying to resolve it how do you sort it out? what is God going to do? so it's really upsetting you it's really troubling you but today even as you prayed, as you lifted that situation up, God's going to come in and bring peace and sort the matter out for you in an unexpected way. There will be peace in that situation. Is anyone here like that? Just put your hand up. I don't want to embarrass you, but you say, well, that's my situation. Anyone? Okay, I don't see any hands. But let's just pray for that as well. And if, if that's your situation, and God works in that situation, just come, share your testimony. Father, we just pray and we just speak, Lord God, right now into that, that situation that we just described. 
that you will turn that around, that there will be peace in that. And exactly as you said, and this person goes back, there'll be peace in that situation. Then they will know that you stepped in, turned that situation around, because it mattered to them, it mattered to you. We thank you, Father, for that. And Father, we also pray for those standing here who need healing in their bodies. Whatever their sickness, whatever their disease, we are your children. You're, you are our Heavenly Father. And so we ask for the release of your healing. We ask for the release of complete deliverance from every affliction. We are the sons and daughters of God and we stand against every spirit of infirmity. I come against every spirit of infirmity that's affected the joints, that's affected the, uh, the, uh, the joints in your body that's causing pain, arthritis. We stand against it. And Father, even now as your children, we re receive healing in the name of Jesus. Let every spirit of infirmity leave now in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. And we thank you, Father. Thank you. I'm just going to let our pastor just call out and minister. I want you to just continue praying. The Lord will speak to them, through them, and uh, just release as, as you feel. Let's go ahead and see. Roshan, see. Ben. I got the words. I am the restorer of lost things. And uh, I just want to encourage if there's anyone here, especially last week, if you've, if you've lost something, I just want you to claim that back in Jesus' name. Uh, anybody who identifies uh, with this, you can just raise your hand and I want to pray with you. I want to declare that the, the restorer of all things restores what is rightfully yours. Father, I declare a return, a restoration of all lost things, O oh God, to your people. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, O oh Lord, that you hear us and you're mindful of us, O oh Lord, of the things that concern us, O oh God. And we just lift up uh, people who have lost things, O oh God, and Lord, we declare restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is just as a confirmation to what uh, Bini Chab is praying for. Is, is um, the scripture that uh, God is reminding me of is, um, even though Cain killed Abel, the Lord granted another. And I, the enemy might have, this is both literally and figuratively, the enemy might have killed your joy, um, whatever it is, but the Lord has granted you another. Amen. The Lord has granted you an other. Amen. So, Father, we just release this word that you are our beautiful redeemer. You are our wonderful restorer, Father. And so we say amen. We say amen to this word that you have released, Father. The enemy might have killed our joy, but you have granted us another. We say amen to that. sense uh, like those of us who are sort of weary in our hearts um, it's been a season of trusting but you know we don't yet see um, the the fruit of our faith uh, but I just want to um, you know, speak and release that that faith for miracles and I just uh, sense that God is awakening our hearts and uh, as pastor was sharing he wants us to to know him for who he is and what he can do um, and, and today uh, I just want us to to put our faith in God for miracles for miracles because he is the God of the exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever ask think or imagine so uh, I just uh, 
declare that over you i just declare that refreshing i just declare that strengthening in the spirit in the name of jesus let faith arise for miracles uh, let faith arise for miracles you know we're just expecting status quo but that's not the god we serve he just does not give us you know a little bit but he's the god who gives us uh, beyond beyond what we have ever asked him so uh, this morning i just i just speak that over our hearts expect miracles from god don't expect little expect miracles from god in jesus name and just another thing that i want to release is uh, i just sense uh, that there are people who are are uh, gifted with Uh, in music they're gifted in music in in some way it could be vocals or instruments uh, and, and i i see that you know you're just crying out to the lord and you're saying lord i want to use this skill for you uh, and i believe god is opening doors even as you honor him with your with your gift the lord is opening doors unusual doors things that you never thought um, are, are going to come your way uh, are coming your way because you you want to honor god with what you have and i just want to release that and i bless you in jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. amen. Uh, i just received um, this word that says return home and make peace if there is anyone who walked out either from home or a situation or a relationship because of something that you didn't see be given to you return home and make peace and the god who provides will ensure that you get your need so i just want to release that and uh, just pray that over you father we come to you with people who are heartbroken lord because of something that has not come their way lord even as you've directed them to return home and make peace lord you be their provider be their restorer be the reconciler of that relationship Thank you for you have answered in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Let's take a moment just to give thanks to God and then we will close. Father, we thank you that you are very real. That you know every person, you know every need, you know every situation, God. Thank you for ministering to your people. Thank you, Father. And we pray that people will walk in the fullness, that we will walk in the fullness of the blessings you've kept for us as your people. That we will walk in victory in every circumstance, in every situation. Thank you, Father. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our heavenly father and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit be with each of us always in jesus name amen 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 thank you for listening we trust this message was a blessing to you for more free resources including sermons sermon notes publication please visit apcwo.org For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcbiblecollege.org. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.